sleep next to pyramids. Orgon and, pyramids? Yeah, one Orgon, one Shungite. And since I began using those, I started to dream again. Like, I couldn't dream before that. Okay, so... Uh, you can't yep. see it. I can kind of see it. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, <laughs> Got little, little tiny one. Excellent. You guys are spot on. Okay. We're on the same level, man. Yeah, same so... Frequency, same frequency. Um, so, I don't think people understand, really, though, the depth to which... And this is a... You know, I say I'm not into theories, but the theories that I do have are built on observation, right? And I like to think I have good observational skills, else, you know, my riddles and stuff, my videos wouldn't be as, as, as good. So I've realized over the past few years, you know, throughout this stuff, that there's something very deep about this electrical connection to our consciousness. And it's, it's a little freaky. Um, and I don't really talk about it very often. I know I've never talked about it on my channel. Um, but there was one time specifically where, you know, I, and actually I did maybe talk a lot about it a little bit because I was mentioning certain numbers on my uh, video that I was teaching about. And then I would get a phone call from those numbers. And as an example, the numbers one time were like 147. And then it was like two different two digit numbers. But I got a phone call from a phone number that started with 147. Well, that shouldn't even be possible. That's, you know, a one is an area code guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what is this? And I put the phone up like, these are the numbers I'm talking about in this video. Someone messing with me, you know? So then the next day, I remember I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, uh, well, I was playing Rocket League at the time. This this will make sense in a second. Hell yeah. It's like it's the last video game I still play. It's probably the best game ever, but whatever. And I'm sitting here playing, and I'm thinking to myself, "You play it through a little bit?" Yeah, I do. I play a little. Okay, all right, right. Yep. Yep. Um, so I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking, "Man, that was so freaking weird when that number called me earlier. What are the odds that it happened? Like, well, wow, that's so strange." And I shit you not, like that was the first time I thought about it in all day. Five seconds later, I get a call from that same number again. And I was like, oh, okay, stop it. You know, I ignore it. It's like, okay, creepy number, reading my mind, ha, -ha. <laughs> So then the next day, right? And it's like 10 o'clock at night, a couple games of Rocket League I'm playing, maybe like four or five or 10, I don't know. But anyways, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, that was so weird yesterday when that number called me after I thought about it. And I'm thinking like my mind just wanders sometimes. And I thought, how come it's never a random number? It's always a number I've been paying attention to or is belongs to someone I know. And I shit you not, dude. 10 seconds later, I get a phone call from a nine digit phone number. And there were no dashes or anything. It was just nine random numbers. What? And I like, I rarely get spooked out by numerology sometimes, but there are things that have spooked me out. And that gave me chills. I'm freaking out. I'm like, really? Really? I've been talking to myself. I'm like, really? 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 <laughs> like, what the hell just happened? So let me give you another example, right? And I always notice this when I'm playing Rocket League. Like, someone will make a cool goal, and it's two to one with 221 on the clock. And I'm like, ha, two to one, two to one, you know? And then the next game, it'll be uh, like three to two, and you realize it's like three minutes and 20 seconds into the game. I, I realize this shit all the time yeah. to the point where it's freaky. And I would, I would challenge someone to run math on this because I, <laughs> there's, there's got to be some statistical relevance to it, man. Oh, yeah, so, no, that happens when it happens yeah. a lot like that. There's no, there's just obvious. It's obvious. That's what. So, it is. so here's one that happened yesterday. Now, I always notice this. And I just glance at it. It crosses my mind. I keep going. Whatever. It's just numbers. I try to not be obsessive about this stuff, you know. But it's hard not to notice when it's there. So, yesterday, I'm playing the game, and th that that's what happened. Is it was two to one. We scored to make it, or no, we, we tied the game with two twenty one left. And I'm like, well, 2-2-1, two, two, the game will probably end 2-1. to one. No big deal. That's probably likely anyway. So then the game goes into overtime, and we score a goal. And I'm like, oh, was it 2-1 to one into overtime? No, it was one twenty two into overtime. And that was actually weird enough to make me freeze. It's like I was reaching, I was like, whoa, that was weird. But then I get a pop-up on my computer. Now, I, get, I have this antivirus software. It comes up once every, I don't know, month or couple weeks that I get an alert. Mine literally just popped up five seconds before you said that. So. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. So, and I, I'm already allowing Zoom to run. And it asked me if, like, do you want to allow Zoom to keep running? And it was my Norton. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Well, my antivirus software read my mind too because it immediately sent me an alert and said, beware of backdoor Trojans. And when I saw it, I said, oh my God. And I typed it in and it was 221 in Jewish Gematria, 2210, 221. And that was after I froze and looked at the screen, which I almost never do. 
And I was like, whoa, and I got chills, man. It freaked me out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm I, like, that sounds so crazy. It sounds so crazy. And I understand anybody who would come into this new would be like, wow, this guy's insane. I get it. Because you know what? When I grew up, I remember an episode of Blind Date. And there was a guy who was talking to this girl they had never met. And the guy, he was like, his name was like, I don't know why I remember this. It was Jasper or something, some Southern guy. And he was talking about when he's watching late night TV, how he has this mind connection with David Letterman. Like he's reading his mind and connection. And the girl's like, oh, this guy's crazy. And rightfully so. You should never talk to a girl about that on a date or a first date, especially. Uh, they don't want to hear about that. Of course not. But like that stuff happens. And I think it's interesting that on TV, they made him look really crazy about it. And maybe he was just starting to wake up. I don't know. But mm -hmm. That stuff is real, man. That stuff is true. And I don't know what this yeah. guy was on the TV show was talking about, but the way this electricity is linked into our minds, man. Um, wow. It's, 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 you know, people are worried about the AI awakening and all this stuff. Like I have these experiences and I, I try to share them with people. And I'm like, I think all this stuff is already all around us, man. Like we're yeah. already neck deep. It's like, we're already, we're already the AI. <laughs> I think so. Like, how do we know that we're not extensions of it? Especially when we look at Gematria and realize that, wait, I'm coded by the numbers? What does yeah, that yeah. say? Well, about like, this? well, computers themselves, right? They're supposed to be extensions of us. They, they do everything that we do, mm -hmm. but tend to be obviously better because we design them to be better. But, and, and I think really on the deep down, they're not because they can't create worlds and all that. But still, they, they, it's reflecting something. And the thing is with binary, right? Binary is just zero and ones but it's still numbers. And maybe the universe is just this binary is just this infinite number binary. Right. And that's the code. It could be. Yeah. yeah it's just this coded reality and everything. I mean, that's the thing I mean, as far as being, uh, you know, tapped into like a certain frequency and everything. I mean, it's been shown that Joe Dispenza talks about it, like how our, like they've measured the brain, the brain wavelengths and stuff, how, you know, they go from alpha and, the, and then the different beta states and then delta, theta, gamma and all that. It's like, you know, tapping into that certain frequency has been proven to create something either within the ether or even within the body and everything. So it's like it could just be the sense of your brain tapping into this certain frequency and you're really you're really just connecting with it and it's like things that you're seeing and are manifesting in reality and everything is is just part of you know like that's the thing that he's also said about you know thinking and you know thoughts and everything aren't necessarily your own they don't they don't occur in the mind yeah they, they, have the mind. Yeah, they actually go yeah. out and grab them and everything so it's like Right. You know, and and then you could take the spiritual meaning behind it. It's like, okay, well, why am I seeing these synchronicities? You know, what is it trying to tell me? And then you could you could go in all sorts of directions with that. Yeah. It's like it's like you're tapping in. You're tapping into a part of the field, and that field needs to show up because we're we're attention goes, energy flows. I think that's the the term. And so I really I think our minds are so powerful. I think they're like quantum machines, and they're they're tapping in the layers of the quantum field. And so when you're when you're constantly focusing and thinking about something and sending out the signal and then the heart field being the strength of the electromagnetic frequency being transmitted out and transduced out into the field. I think we commute uh, or uh, Greg ba uh, Braden, you had talked about his book on the, the one video I watched to you. Sure. And, and we both know that he says the heart field is the, you know, five times five thousand. I forget the, the number, but it's thousands of times stronger than the field of the mind. So to think that this is wild, be like the tuning. The, the, you know, what you're, you're scoping into and then the heart having so much, because you're getting excited and because you're having this passion, like I'm seeing this number and then you get more excited, that field starts to send out a stronger and stronger signal. And now it starts to happen all the time. That's what I'm saying with certain days, like you're tapped into a good feeling and all of a sudden it's a good day and so many good things. Why, why, why is everything going right today? Well, it's the frequency you're on, you know, it's the, the signal you're sending. You know? Yeah, I think so. And maybe a little bit to what you said earlier, Ray, that maybe all of this has kind of already happened already to some hmm. degree or on some level, right? Because, I mean, if there is a limit to the speed of light, then that means there's a source. And uh, hmm. yeah, I'm not best at the spiritual analogies, but, you know, oh, I totally I think, get I think you're, you're onto it. Like the way, like what I see the earth as, you know, um, this planet that we're on that's coasting through this massive place, you know, there's so much distraction. I feel like there's a lot of distraction about aliens right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they're here. Oh, of course. Like, I know okay. I know aliens are going to come in a spaceship. Like you're going to tell me they can figure out how to break the, the light barrier, but they're also not going to figure out invisibility and, 
and all this other stuff. Like, I mean, come on, they're not, they're not little green men. That's not, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, they live the documentary um, about the aliens that are already here. One of the best ever. Yeah. And one of the most truth in it and the best fight scene in any movie ever. It's like a six and a half minute fight scene. Him just trying to get a guy to put the glasses on. That's all he's <laughs> trying to do. I'm like, oh, that's my life. That's so perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's perfect symbolism. It really, it really is. is. He's trying to get someone to put the glasses on. Like, dude, see, just look. Just look real quick. You know, and speaking on the whole, uh, it just popped into my head, but you said everything's already created, right? Energy can't be created nor destroyed since everything yeah. exists now. That, that would even prove the whole thought factor, meaning your thoughts already been thought before. Mm-hmm. It's already yeah. there. You that know, makes, grabbing that, it. That makes me wonder, like, is there a way that maybe possibly the Jamacha, and maybe this is what maybe these elites possibly do too, is like somehow figure out the code through the Jamatra to be able to tap in, let to say the Akashic records and everything to kind of see, you know, tap into like, okay, well, this has already happened and we could tap into that to mirror it in this, in this, uh, in this realm, in this reality, mm. you know, it's like, is, is there probably a way of, of, of them who knows that's the whole in the mystery schools and everything, how, how they know to do these things. And that goes along with what Ray said about the whole black magic thing. You know, people be like, I'll oh, get the hell out of here. Magic. Da, 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 like, and stuff but you know if it's lasted and been in our uh in our cultures for so long there's got to be some sort of truth to it yeah well let me, let me add this into to that is if so if you're a firm believer and you give what you get and the law of attraction and and all that type of stuff manifestation and and synchronicities that is magic you know magic's just a yeah. word just like the word conspiracy created in the 60s or whatever to implant this meaning in our head that it's this ridiculous thing same thing with magic i mean we we think we related to magic shows and rabbits being pulled out of hats and stuff like that but with a k magic with a k when you go back into ancient history it, it's prevalent that they used it and in my eyes what we call the law of attraction and manifestation that's magic right like like magic is a uh, this mystical word but really if you think about it as like attention energy focus you know magic is a combination of those things um, because I think that's probably closer to the truth is that, you know, like you said, energy can't be wasted or, or, or created or destroyed. So you can build energy and amass it and release it. And I think that's actually at the core of a lot of this. And you look at any magician, they'll teach you like the first step is meditation, understanding how to control the mind mm-hmm. and focusing the mind because the mind is so powerful. And the only proof you need to learn how powerful our minds are is to look at the mainstream media to see how, how strongly and desperately they're fighting for it because they know that we're the ones manifesting our reality, not them. Mm-hmm. They need to convince us to manifest their reality. Yeah. Cause we're the majority. Yes. So, you know, uh, so staging a, a rule of masonry is they have to tell you what they're doing too. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it seems like it, right. Yeah. Um, and I, I wonder what that is because there has to be a balance to it. Like if you're, if you're in Freemasonry and that's your rule, wh- where's the balance? Because I, I guess we talked about this earlier and how we saw, you know, Zach's channel get a certain size and then it eventually gets chopped down. It's like, you know, the hints have to be there, but they can't be too obvious. How do you ride that line? And it's, it's wild to me how, you know, people are so susceptible to the fairy tales and they just want to believe it so bad. It's it really feels like there's so many different realities playing out right now, and you've got everyone in their own bubbles. And I've never felt so distant from the closest people to, to me in my life. You know, the ones who love me the most. And you know, it's like I, I felt I feel like we couldn't be more worlds apart. Um, yeah, it's you could be in the same time house. And, You could be in the same house with somebody, and not you're not in the same place. Yeah. yeah. And what's wild is like, you even look at the quote unquote woke crowd. And I like how you pointed out earlier, not necessarily woke, but aware or awake, right? Because, you know, this is a hijacked word and they want woke to mean one thing. They want woke to be like, oh, I stand up for, yeah, like I stand up for everybody. Everything offends me. I'm woke. You know, I I know that if that offends one person somewhere, I'm it's sensitive to me because I am everything. About Probably like, another psyop. Like, like that's garbage. Exactly. Um, but when we talk about well, we're we're talking about being aware to the existence of something greater and larger than us. I think, mm-hmm. like at, at the base, more or less. Um, so, 
forgot exactly where I was going with that. But, you know, people are, uh, yeah, people have to make the decision. That's what I was trying to say. I think everyone agrees. Like the, <laughs> the dichotomy between the ability to kind of mentally elevate yourself with all the tools we have at hand, astrology, numerology, never being made so clear and apparent before. Yeah. And then you have the other side of it too, where if you want to ignore all that and just live in entertainment, oh boy, now is your time, man. Like you can, especially with 5G, if you go anywhere, stream an HD movie everywhere you go. So you're seeing like the branches kind of split off. Like I can never go back to being the other way, you know? And how many of those people that are stuck in that path are too far beaten down it? You know, the brain is too mushy at this point to turn back around and go the other way. So to me, it's kind of fascinating that there's always going to be like both sides of this is that mm -hmm. the people who want to believe what's going on. I mean, is it our job to take it down? Right. Like this media that exists, like I have a strong desire to that. Uh, we talked about, they live <laughs> that freaking scene from the movie, you know, they stormed the station and, and held it hostage until they cut the signal. Like, like yeah, that's, that's kind of a fantasy of a lot of us. I think who are doing this work. It's like, man, if only I could have the, the message to the world that they have, but That'll never happen. Like it'll get shut down the instant I enter a building. You know, I know that. So it, well, it, how do we handle that? Well, I think it also goes back to the, the fact of consciousness and access to certain information comes from the state of mind that you're in regardless. So I don't even think you have, like, if I, I, if I see a long hallway, like if life was like a long hallway and, and like you know, each door represented like states of mind or thoughts, like, I feel like a lot of that door is locked for so many people because they, they threw out the key a long time ago by saying that stuff's malarkey, that stuff's nonsense, it's bullshit. I don't want to, I don't even want to hear it. And I think that actually came from the system, you know, that came from relig the actual of course. organized religion that came from your school systems. And you had very rare people like you or me or Gio or Zach or anybody else who actually, by the way, was a school teacher in that environment, crazy, you know, but more so is like, we had the key, we never threw it out and- I, I, I think it's a gift. I really, I think it is. And to try and influence the world, I think it, this goes back to manifestation rules. I don't think it's about taking down the cabal, but right. it's about the, the polar opposite of just waking people up who are ready to wake up and putting out the information as much as we can without trying to have war, you know, with yeah. the opposite side. But I do think that exposing and it's showing people that can be the key to a lot of people, you know? So it's like, there, there is well, that definitely right. I mean, cause when you look at, okay, like if someone was to take action, right. Who are the people, who are the people that you would be harming? Not the people that you're at, right? Like if I walk into a, a news station, a local news station or whatever, and I look around, I'm going to see a lot of unawake uh, lost people who aren't probably very happy deep down, you know, maybe they have their thing, but that's what I see. Like, you're not going to change anything by it's set up that way. You'll know, you'll never be able to access the people you need to. There's too much security. There's too much of that. So for me, that's, Ed, that's Ed, not, what's that? I think that's a true statement in the Bible. A parable in the Bible says, let the dead bury the dead. And I think that really is, is let the yeah, it's, people who are already dead in consciousness, just do their thing and drift off, you know? And don't you feel like that's one of the biggest challenges we have is like, letting go of that for the people that you love the most and care about. Yeah. Like you want to bring yeah. everyone up with you. You want to like, Hey, like we can all understand more and learn more and, and appreciate, and I think appreciate life more. Like, you know, I, I feel like a lot of my energy um, in groups that I'm in is very infectious. And it's because I have that, like, like you mentioned with the heart and head field, you know, I, so I spent so much time building what I'm trying to turn into a positive thing that it's kind of like bouncing out of my heart now, you know? Right. And people, people sense that to some degree. And I just try to be positive. Like when I'm, when I'm in people, in the room with people who aren't awake, I don't call them stupid or, or just throw numbers at them. What I find myself doing is asking a lot of questions and actually never really saying anything is just asking like, what is herd immunity? And based on these stats, do you think we're there yet? You know, and I, I, I turn it on them and, and you know, flip it around. And it's like, well, you realize people, it breaks them down in a different way and they don't get as upset. They might get upset, but not like angry or in a way that they're going to cast you off. Um, but if you can approach them and just like, and, and not even ask accusatory questions, you know, but mm -hmm. 
Uh, to me, I, I don't know. That's I'm not saying that's the best method. That's just where I'm at. Right I, I'm with that because I do believe that, uh, you know, le people are at a level of, back to levels of consciousness. You have to, I think, meet them down where they're at. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about information that vibrates way higher, it's, it's way out of the dimension of what they think in. You have to, like you're saying, like you meet them at their level, like just and just keep a rope for yourself just so you don't. Obviously, I think we're all permanently where we're supposed to be when it comes to the truth community. A lot of us like it's almost impossible to get stuck back into the to the, you know, the hypnotic haze that they have. But more so is I think that's what it really is. So once again, having a video about Gematria, talking about the Jesuits, talking about all this stuff, I think it's it's in levels of frequency and, and consciousness. And you have to go down and even act sometimes like the people and take on the vibration so they can relate and feel your vibe. You know, I mean, yes, giving off a loving vibration, I think love conquers all. So if you come off with this, this loving vibe of like, hey, I, I have this knowledge, I have this stuff, I want to teach you it. You know, and I think it'll be helpful. And here's my reason why. And it's not to be some sort of cuck and like to just, oh, I'm being a nice guy about it. It's just you have to match people. I think that's the only, how do you connect? You know, I have to call your phone or log into, I have to send you your email and that's your specific frequency. So picture the ether like the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So how are you going to ask someone if you don't have their email address? And what if their email address is that vibrational signature? The yeah. thoughts they think, the emotions they feel the level of consciousness they're at, you're not going to reach people if you're not vibrating the same, you know, and it's doesn't mean you have to permanently meld to that. Yeah, and I think that it, it does it to even get to have any sort of sense of getting people that are maybe low vibrational to even wake up is like you're saying, though, is to is to really engage them in thought and learning and, you know, questioning, you know, having them think in a sort of way of their own principle to even start making some questions because then if they hear those questions and they're coming from their own intuition it may plant a seed to 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 search further i know it's not about revolting and the protests and all that stuff and everything like you know that that only goes so far i think you know what i mean like there has to be actual uh, you know organized thought and feeling and everything just being processed to the point and and questioning questioning is a big thing you know you're not going to be able to find really anything if you don't question things and you know i think that's right. the other thing i think people are just afraid of what you know there's some people that want to do those things uh but they just submit because they're also you know they may be in some sort of comfort zone or they're just scared to see what's on the other side of it you know and to yeah. see how it may possibly shatter their reality and suffering being the catalyst to use that someone like you or me or geo it's suffering usually is the catalyst to go, you know what? I'm asking these questions because I'm tired of this. I'm tired of my job. I'm tired of being treated the way I am. I, I, the school system made no sense. Religion makes no sense to certain people and whatever. So there, and there's this disconnect, I think, that goes on where you're, you, you want connection. So it's like, well, there's nowhere else to go. There's nowhere else to go but ask the questions. You know, and I think that's a catalyst for a lot. But like Gio's saying, right, is to the, pro the energy even just at a protest is not you know, yeah. one, one, it can be misconstrued and, and used <clears throat> as a tool because you can have a peaceful protest and all you need is a, 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 a group of people to send in some, you know. People. Yeah, it's very easy to do and it's oh, very yeah. predictable when it happens too. Yeah, yeah I went to um, one protest after the, the lockdowns began. I went to the state capitol and I wasn't there so much to protest the government. I knew that what I was, you know, me standing out there is not going to change anything, but Pound I wanted to bring... Yeah, I wanted to bring signs, so I held up some Gematria signs, and uh, um, I had made, I printed out a bunch of pamphlets, so for people who were interested, I'd pass out, they could learn more, like some basic stuff about, I, I had all sorts of different topics. See, that's effective, though. Like, I feel like that's more effective than just sitting yeah. there running around screaming. I guess the biggest mistake I made is not finding, like, I, I someone was going to go with me, but they had to back out a couple of days earlier, and I was they were going to film me as I talked to people. That would have been such a damn good video, because everybody there was so receptive to it. And what was so awesome to me is that um, there were at least a half dozen people who knew about Gematria and used my calculator that I met there. And uh, a couple of them knew who I was. I was like, holy shit, I can go to like a random crowd of people. This is spreading. This is working. It helped reinvigorate me a little bit. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's hard to see what impact. It's impossible to see what impact you're having because uh, the stats are lies. Uh, you know, the numbers they give us are lies. We're shadow banned in certain places. It's like, well, I have to come to come to peace with the fact that I'll never know the impact I had until I die. Like, mm -hmm. I'll never know if I'm truly making the difference I hope I am. Um, seeing that guys like you and I'm not sure how old you guys are. Maybe you, my age or younger a little bit. Um, uh, that'd be 29. 
Okay. So yeah, a little bit younger than me. I'll be 36 in June. So, yeah. um, you know, for me, like when I started getting into this and I started to see these, you know, organic things with numerology in addition to what was playing out in the mainstream, once I realized how much this meant to my life, I was like, okay, this is, you know, as someone who despised school so much, this was the learning I was looking for. And I want to make this available to everybody who's looking for it. And some people who aren't even looking for it, you know? So for younger people, even though it's from basically the same generation almost, uh, to, you know, find interest in this and help spread it, like that itself is a dream come true, you know, because what, when I first started talking about this people, uh, most people I knew, you know, would laugh me off or call it crazy. And some of them still do. But, you know, it would be pretty cool that, you know, by the time I go, you know, I'm looking down and there's all sorts of people posting about their numerology and, you know, uh, they landed a job and they write a blog post about how they got a new job on this day. And maybe that's the only blog post they make all month about numerology, but mm -hmm. it's something they're interested in, something that's in the consciousness. I'd love to make it into that. And um, because it's relatable for I think... Yeah, and I think we deserve it. You know, we deserve access to the knowledge that's available in the Akashic Records, the Ether, whatever, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's all out there. The, the internet that what we're doing right now is a physical manifestation of the Akashic Records. Uh, yeah, it must be, man. Because think about like, you know, we talk about the number six 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 and how big that is, and everyone instantly like, oh, the devil, Satan. I'm like, nah, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, like, it's about, I think, creation and. Uh, and infinite, it, it, infinity, or whatever the word is. Um, it's basically uh, like it just existence, the creation, existence. Yeah, yeah. So number the six, sun, six, I think too. The moon. Right, the magic square of the sun is six six six. The moon is all about six six six. The sun and the moon. I mean, you mm -hmm. those two things, but especially the moon. Saturn too, are, right? Uh, the magic square of Saturn. Eddie magic Gold, square of Saturn on on fifteen forty five and. Uh, um, Yes, yeah, sums to forty five. Each each row and column is fifteen. I so watched six. The David Ike video had that whole thing how it connected to masonry, the Saturn square. Okay, yeah, right on. It, it very much does. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So the number six six six. It's like it's something about awakening as well. And when you look at the, the history of the computer, the first Apple computer was sold at six hundred sixty six dollars and sixty six cents. And there's a big long-winded story about it, how they, they went in there with a $500 uh, price idea, but they had to increase it by one third based on the taxes. And they liked repeating digits. So let's go with the sixes. That's all it was, right? And how about the apple being eaten um, as their logo? Yeah, the snake into the apple. And then you have NASA with the snake tongue and National Aeronautics and Space Administration equals 666. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and you know how, so you're getting that too, is it's not, it doesn't mean like just the beast. And I do think it has a thing with like, you know, well, right. And, well, the thing is, so if you add up six plus six plus six, it's 18, one plus eight, nine, the number of consciousness. Also, yeah. you had a number in the Bible, 144,000 people to come and awake the world. I think that's what those people were, the 144,000, whatever they meant. I know that that's the, the, the amount of petals in the crown chakra. And it's also one plus four plus four is nine which right. is the higher so i think the 666 is the beast in man i think it's the lower consciousness but it means many it still means creation it still means divine sure. you know and and right. that's that's i think that's a big you know and then you also have the uh the six protons six neutrons six mm -hmm. electrons it's it shows up everywhere yeah right it does. I, think it, I think there's a good there's a good side to it all yes so like the words computer and internet both have sumerian gematria of 666 mm. and you realize you know, when you look at the gematria, for instance, of, of Lucifer, it's the same 74 value as Jesus. So a lot, that's another thing. A lot of people equate Lucifer with Satan or the devil, but that is never really made in the Bible to my knowledge. It's, you know, Lucifer literally means a light bringer. Mm -hmm. How amazing is it that Venus, word? Venus being the light bringer when he's at, when, yeah, that's right. I know that that's a theory. Could be. And here we have this, uh, this internet now, which is helping us wake up to this other layer of reality. And, um, you know, again, how it impacts everyone is different, but to me that having that available and, uh, just for people to be aware to it is the key. Yeah. And I think you're actually, you're doing the right thing too, by just passionately doing it and going about it your own way, because you want to we, we also had talked with the podcast, of course, every week with our mercurial minds, 
we, mm -hmm. we think about how we can make it better. And we thought about how if you're, if we're all connected, which we are, and someone's listening now the past few episodes, we we're doing Nibiru in the Anunnaki and we were talking about, you know, we want to state facts and we want to bring things to people. So we, we found ourselves reading a lot on our podcast and we thought about the energy we were giving off. And so if you're coming with the like regurgitating, it's kind of here's the facts, da, 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 people are going to feel that whether it's through the Spotify pot, you know, the podcast or whether it's on YouTube and someone like you or anybody else who's passionate, I think that's really important to, to consider that the energy you're giving off because we're all connected through the ether is important. If you're, if you're coming with this excitement and this love for people and wanting to enlighten them, they're going to, regardless how you look, regardless of what you're even, you know, as long as you're presenting, you know, presentable things with facts and stuff. But if you're coming off, I think that energy, it means just as much as the actual information yeah. kind of goes back to Zach's. You're right. Yeah. Some people can catch a vibe from them. I see past that. I get it. But the vibe you're giving off, man, if you believe the universe in what it is being energy and all that, and there's this Akashic records and we're all connected and be careful what you're sending out, you know? Yeah, I think that goes back down to also, you know, you know, the facts are great and all, but it's also thinking more so since you're saying we're all connected and stuff, it's the relevance. You know, how is what I'm saying going to be relevant to whoever I'm trying to wake up or, you know, you know, give them some sort of bit of information or plant a seed? The purpose. You know, yeah, they have to feel that they, they have to feel that energy and that relevance. Yeah, absolutely. Um yeah, no, I appreciate you guys are very focused on that aspect of it. And I think it's it's understated a lot in us because, you know, everyone who's doing this awakening stuff, like we're not really like trained, you know, video creators or, or no. teachers. And well, Zach is a trained teacher, actually, you could tell. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> guys, that guy's mind's a machine. Yeah, that's true. Um, so He's just thank dude. You. He gets running, bro. I'm like, I don't know how he does it. And then, right, he's a teacher. So I'm like, oh, yeah, that, le that left brain's locked in. And I think actually, so that's right. The left brain, you can't just come from the left brain factual aspects. There's that right side, spiritual, creative, whatever. And I think if there was an improvement to make from all of our standpoints, I think that's probably it. Pre presenting things more colorfully, having better energy. Uh, it, it should be focused on just like the facts. Right. No, neither more is, is is neither one is more important than the other. Yet they they that that's there's that integration, you know, the integration of being 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 someone who gives off an energy like, hey, I care about you, I care about the information I'm bringing, and I'm going to present it to you in the best way possible, and hopefully I feed not only your mind but I feel I I feed your your field and your emotions. Yeah, yeah, that's a legit uh, challenge for me too. I mean, I, I like to think I. Uh, do a decent job of it but hey i get angry man it's really easy and uh, it, it, it is yeah i shouldn't call it anger necessarily because well, I mean, i'm not a i'm not an angry sub emotion person. it's like a sub emotion of it's a frustration though too yeah. maybe yeah i mean same thing with that same thing yeah and i i especially get it like over the past year you know because now okay not only do i think i see something that other people don't but i fucking called it like I have these posts. Look at my posts. I'm predicting riddles. Blah blah blah. So when you when you're that deep in and people still don't wake up, it it, it builds quickly, man. If people can't see it, um. So yeah, it's hard for me to get frustrated with others for anger because I literally wake up like just mad at something sometimes, and maybe it's because you know I can't go to the hardware store without getting looked at for not wearing a mask, or it just might be something minor. You know, but those little things sometimes bother me. It's, that lim it's I, the lim limitations, limitations, restrictions, not being able to, especially having a Gemini mind. Come on now. It, we, we exactly don't like to be caged it, in. If you cage us in, we are immediately no, like, and we, we get angry. That's, it's a real thing. We don't, we like to drift off in the thought, you know, like I understand most of the people who are awake are, you know, not uh, pro mask or anything, but I don't know if anyone hates him as much as I do, man. Like I hate him with such a passion. I, yeah, and good for you. Good for you. Yeah, we, like, both, we both are. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I honestly, I honestly, actually, just when I went when I went to the store before, you know, all this and everything, like I, I literally walked in, didn't even put it on. I had it in my hand because I use one of those uh, what's it called, yeah. face shield, face shield things and stuff, and I put mm -hmm. it around like, and I just like sometimes I like to test it now, and I'm just like, 
you know, I'm in a place where everybody wears a mask all the time and stuff. I'm like, let me just test it. And like, you know, I see somebody look at me and I kind of just like put it up. And then afterwards, I'm like, screw this. I take it down. Afterwards, nobody even ends up saying anything to you. You know, no, there's, yeah. there's well, certain people that are going to stay in their lanes. Well, I, I mean, yeah, I, I haven't worn a mask, but like the only time I wore one was to my uncle's funeral uh, at the end of last year. And like, I refuse to wear it when I, unless it's like in an environment like that, where I was like, okay, I got to suck it up here. But uh, I, I just won't do it. And just, it's not that I don't, or I have a problem with it, but occasionally, uh, I guess I'm a very, I'm a kind of one of those HSPs, you know, I'm kind of sensitive to the, to the vibrations and thoughts Same. and senses of people around me. We all, we both have water moons. Do you know your moon sign? Uh, my moon is, I was born for, uh, on a full moon. So that would be a Sagittarius. That Okay. Yeah. Sagittarius. Well, it's fire signs. Oh, and I'm sorry. Idea. Sagittarius Capricorn. Western astrology, it's uh, uh, Capricorn. But okay. classic astrology, my moon was at the tip of the sphere on Sagittarius with the full moon. So you're on the cusp with with your moon sign. And the thing is, is yeah. if you, Santos Bonacci has videos on tropical and Vedic, mm -hmm. and there's there's validity to both of them. And I would say because we're here on Earth, tropical. Not that it's more important. I feel like it's better to go with that at first if you don't yeah, kind of I agree. But so if you, I mean it, so in tropical you're saying you're a Capricorn moon and you know you're uh you're rising? Mm. No. Well, it, rising would be the sign after the sun or after your sun sign or something. Well, so what what it is is at the exact time you were born, there is a there is a sign on the eastern horizon. And so what mm. that is, is the first house in your chart. And what that is, is more of your, it's the, it's the mask people see. It's the mask you wear. The sun is your soul, S-O-L, solar. And then you have the ascendant rising sign rising on the horizon. And that's going to be the house of your ego. So it's going to be what people see. Like, so I'm a Sagittarius rising. So that yeah. whole, like, I come off preachy or teacher like, or with the higher knowledge and, and all that. But why I asked is, so me and Gio both have water moons. I have a moon in Cancer and he has a moon in Pisces. And that gives you the ability to really feel the environment. There's other stuff in the chart, but yeah, sure. Capricorn is the opposite of Cancer, so it's the same line of energy. So you, yeah, that I, HSP would would work in a Capricorn. Maybe. I want to I want to say uh, I have like a Cancer rising, but I'm not sure on that. So that I changes that. twelve the, the rising sign. So that changes twelve times a day then. Yeah. So or there's there's two I hours see. per sign. I, okay, day. gotcha. Now it makes sense. So I now never really actually understood it. Minute. Yeah. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it's cancer then based on that. Um, yeah. I can see that. I'll, I'll have to double check. But yeah, um, the, the, I've read into the Sagittarius or Capricorn moon and the Capricorn moon descriptions are freakishly specific. That's some of those websites have really actually spooked me out too. Like type your, your birth date, your name and your date of birth and location here. And we'll tell you everything about you. And I know it's not a hundred percent perfect for everybody, but when I read yeah. it, I was like, damn, it's like, it was like, oh, you like to look at uh, existing systems and, and help fix them and make them more efficient. I'm like, that's exactly how I got my job. That's what I'm trying to do with Gematria. Like, this is I'm like, okay. Capricorn <laughs> rules the bones, man. Right. The, the, yeah, structure, the structure of things. Sure. And the thing with masks, too, it's like, I have asthma, so I actually do have a legitimate medical reason not to. My doctor told me I shouldn't be wearing one. Um, but just the idea that people are looking at me like I'm some kind of virus or disease or whatever. And it even came up like at work this week. Uh, there's a meeting at the warehouse and I asked their policy and I'm not going to be able to get a note from my doctor and my GE nurse in a day. So I'm like, oh, I guess I'm not going. Got to fire me if, if you don't like it. <laughs> but that's but the other thing, they know though, they can't. The, so the whole, the whole disability act though, that that's there. It's like, you know, if you're walking, which I don't get why more people don't do this. And I know there's a lot of people that know about it, but it's like, if you walk, I, I mean, I get it. Listen, businesses they have the right to refuse service so you know that's the conflict you're, you're going to deal with but like if there, we have the disability act where it's our own personal health information that we don't need to disclose so when you're sitting there going and, and you say hey that someone says hey you need to put on a mask or whatever and it's like i have a medical uh, a disability that I, I can't wear the mask and then it's like okay well show me the proof i don't have to show you the proof i'm protected yeah. under the disability act like right. you know that's you know if you were to say like you know uh, we have to see that your your doctor has to tell us that that's legitimate and stuff no they don't because it's against hipaa 
Yeah. You know, and, and there's True, all these yeah. little things. And it's like, I feel like people are just so submissive to it that they don't even attempt to even try just because they don't feel like stirring the pot or being somebody who who mm. who who has to go against the green and, yeah. and, and, and they don't want conflict. And I get that. Like, I, I don't like conflict. I don't I don't like to really stir shit. And that's why, yeah, I just go in, do what I have to do. I put on the mask, whatever and stuff. But then at times I'm just like, why? Why am I still doing it? You know? Yeah. And well, if you if you still do it, I mean, they're still going to ask you. That's that's how I see it. And some of my friends too. I've, I've taken issue with like, like before we'll go into a restaurant, they'll put on a mask. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, like you're you're coming in with a gematronator, dude. Don't put a mask on. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, it's like, um, I only caused a scene once. I had like a couple drinks and we went to a Chipotle, and the the lady when I didn't even mention the medical condition, I just was just like, well, your mask ain't over your nose and. And uh, like you just touched your face five times with me standing in line. None of you really know what this is about, do you? And they start laughing, right? And I'm like, laugh it up! And I just like walked out. It was great. I enjoyed that. That was my one blow up in public. Uh, release, so, release isn't a bad thing. Yeah, I, I blame the, the two drinks, man. Those spirits were they, they wanted out. And they went. <laughs> yeah, alcohol. That's actually. Did you know alcohol was actually named after a star? Yes. Oh, well, a star I didn't know. I knew the, the connection between ghoul and alcohol or whatever. But Al Algol is actually the name of a demon star, which led huh. to the mythology of Algol, which is the, the flesh-eating spirit, which leads to the word alcohol, which is why your alcohol stores are called spirits. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I realized that, like, man, I had one beer once, and I started, like, saying stuff out loud, and I'm like, what did I just even say out loud? Like, I don't even know what that was. Oh, careful, I had so. two. Actually, me and him both had similar experiences, but I think back almost two years ago now, dude. I, I, I'm a nice person. I I rarely blow up, but you're talking about that release, right? I went to a yeah. Yankees game, got kicked out twice, snuck in three times, cursed off cops, told them to blow me. I'm I am not that person, <laughs> dude. Yeah, but, you don't. No, you don't I was wanna... I was definitely possessed that night. Yeah, you don't want to know my stories. I, uh, <laughs> alcohol was the thing for me that ended up turning out that I had just had ended up just staying away from it at some point. It just started reacting yeah. differently. And I think just being in tune with certain emotions and a deep level and stuff, it really does. It puts you in a whole nother frequency and a whole nother way of of being. In that, there's a yeah. certain release that comes out of you and everything. And <laughs> shit was not pretty at times. Well, I, the way I look at alcohol is what Ray was talking about with weed, more or less, where it's like, that is something that definitely lowers my vibrations and puts me down somewhere. And mm. I'm not a teetotal, like I'll still enjoy a drink or whatever, but I don't drink anywhere near like I used to. And not that I even drank a lot, but like my family has a history, um, especially on my dad's side. So I had Same. to be careful with, yeah, I had to be careful with it. And I did pretty well. There's some crazy things I did in my 20s that I probably shouldn't have, but I think everybody says that. That's a co um, yeah, common common thing said yeah yeah and I, I i was at the point where literally like if i dry, drink one beer i'll get a headache now like i can't even finish a beer i can handle like like mixed drinks or whatever but um no matter how much i ate no matter how much i drink i, I drink a beer and my head gets sore I, I can't even sleep i'll wake up in the middle of the night with a headache um yeah i shit for wild. like days now <laughs> I, I just don't know what happened it's like over the past few months like from november december or whatever it's just alcohol, like my body just doesn't take it the same way anymore. It's, yep. Which I don't yeah. mind. It's fine, but I'm I have going to miss say, some things. <laughs> there must be an application, though, because I know that Egyptians and plenty of other, I don't know if it was Egyptians, but it was, uh, and ancient cultures used it to access spirits. So obviously mm -hmm. there was this more divine reason. And maybe, who knows, maybe it was to get in touch with your demons. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like, it's not something where you can look at it and say it's good or bad. Like, Alcohol has led me to some of the most fun times in my life. But, oh. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, yeah, I've had some fun. It's times. like I've, I've had, now that I've had fun times. Like, okay, I know what it's all about. I don't need it so much anymore. Um, no, no, I, I, I believe I'm actually any intake I have is usually plants. I mean, and, and the thing is, is uh, I actually drink kratom. I, I love that stuff. And I was never on any other drugs or whatever. I know actually some people take it to get off heroin because it actually hits oh. the mu opioid receptors. But I, I never had any issues with that, but I do like a cup or two a day and, oh, dude, it just 
kind of like an endorphin release and a mild, like a euphoria. It makes tedious work very nice. And uh, I was actually going to start a business, believe it or not, on the internet. I, I get it right from Indonesia. It's the only place it grows, but it's a tropical plant and it's, it's got like 45 different alkaloids. That's all I need, man. Like, okay. and, that's, and it's not even something that I do to like escape or, you know, or cover something up. It's actually just more of this enjoyment factor. So right on. Yeah, I'm pretty simple when it comes to that. I just sip a little coffee for a few hours in the morning. And Caffeine's number good. one. The drug of choice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would not see most of the videos and web pages that I have that had not been for the magical caffeine drug. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And they do preach that it's not great. But I mean, if you think like that all the time, you just know, you know, in this day and age with the way, I think with the speed of everything, talk about like vibration and energy too with time. I do feel like time sped up. And I feel like the day you think that too, huh? Yeah, I think so, man. I don't think that's actually even the whole, like, Oh, as you get older, you know, time's going to speed up. I really think it actually sped up. And I know that there was a, uh, my astrologer talked about it. He had said, um, that there was a, there was glitches in the earth. If you follow, I think suspicious observers on YouTube and it's a real science, uh, thing. And they talk about the, the spin of the earth and there's been glitches where it actually has sped up. So days are getting faster. So. I don't know. I've known. I've looked at the clock before. When I was younger, I used to be able to count to thirty seconds with my eyes closed. Boom, and it would be like twenty nine and a half, or just over thirty. I was really good at it. And this time, I did it, and it was like forty two seconds had gone by, or whatever. I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> like good. I was freaked me out. I was like, oh, so I don't like know. Our maybe perception, that was just that day or something. Yeah, maybe it's like our. Maybe it never changed, or maybe it doesn't change big on the physical level. But I do think our perception of it, one hundred percent, a day feels so quick. This came, I, this came quick, dude. I, what did I message you last week? This came quick. Oh uh, yeah. No, I, I agree. It's not like it's slowing down. I think a big, another way of looking at it too, is that each day we grow, the past day was the smallest percentage of our life that any day has ever been. You know what I mean? So sure. it's like years are, this past year was just one thirty fifth of my life. Whereas I think back when I was you know 12, a year, like a year, I looked at a year then, like I look at a decade now. <laughs> Like a year felt so far down the road. Wow, I'd be, I'm going to be in another grade. I'm going to be three inches taller. I'm going to be better at baseball. This is going to be great. And uh, now it's like my head's in like my 40s already, man. Like you look at my beard. Oh, my <laughs> beard's getting gray already, which is fine. I, I came out an old man. My, my parents always called me the old man like when I was young. Oh, like I would, uh, Capricorn moon. Yeah, I, I got the same thing as growing up. I always got told I was like the old man. I always call me an old. Uh, I even though I was a kid, I was like a t- old Italian man all the time. <laughs> Shit, I I'm only 29. I already got some of the gray hairs coming in and stuff over yeah. here. So I'm still considered like a boy. So <laughs> you look like it. <laughs> you know, I, got, I, I was I out Gemini syndrome, man. Uh, sure. Uh, hey, people have never guessed I'm older than I was, mm-hmm. except for when my beard was like this long, but. Anyway, uh, no, but like, yeah, I would, my parents would be on vacation or whatever. My parents would wake up and I'd be on the porch, like on the balcony, out looking and be like, what a beautiful day. I was like five. I was like, I'm kind of five-year-old. <laughs> that magic number. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, my, my full name, by the way, it reduces to five. So you got that. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, there's something to it, man. Something to it. And, and, and I think so. It's the same with Zachary K. Hubbard's full name. Dude, the whole connection five. you made with him with the Scientology, that was crazy. Because I thought a Hubbard, right. I, I knew Ron Hubbard. Well, not knew him, but like I knew who he was because my mom dated some psychopath, not nothing against Scientologists, but like he was wacko Scientologist. Like, wha- like when I say wacko, I mean he was just very like pushy with it. And I knew all sure. about it. So I knew about Ron Hubbard and Zachary K. Hubbard. I'm sitting there like, no, like. What right, but like you, you see the point I'm making. It's not like, Zach is a part of the occult or anything. It's just like Hubbard, the word Hubbard is in the public consciousness as a, as a form of new, I new ideas, new energies. And it just so happens they happen to be connected by the name of Hubbard. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and well, and Ron Hubbard was very pushy with not like pushy, but like he invented a whole new religion, like, and Zach becoming off, like he's like, Dramatria is becoming some sort of, I, hey, there is there are some people who follow that shit like a religion, absolutely. And uh, I've I've done a lot on my Discord channel to try and like dispel people from, like I have a lot of ciphers on my website, and you know some of them were added experimentally. Others I thought maybe there's some relevance, but 
you got people like combining completely different ciphers and making all these overlapping connections that it's like, guys, you can, I mean, you can't really do anything or you can't do everything with numbers, but when you're using them as many techniques, you can sure do a hell of a lot with numbers that aren't really there. So yeah. Who's the guy that goes on his show that does all the star, all the astrology stuff. You said his name before. Um, you know, for who, who connects, uh, He's on TFR, to astrology? T, the, yeah, uh, TFR guy. What's his name? The, J, it's the tax buddy. Um, oh, Rambo. Rambo. I, yeah. I love watching his stuff. He had something on yeah, he's brilliant. Saturn conjunction. And I think what I'm getting at is you said not everything could be numbers. I think this is a, back to the reason why all of, if you're going to learn the occult, like it's kind of just good to see it as a whole, I think, because there is many things, many tools you could use and why limit yourself to just the numbers right so all these sciences exist so with with rambo uh he and i were in touch for a while i haven't talked to him in a little bit but um he was on my discord and we were sharing ideas like every day for a while Hmm. and uh you know like i mentioned he's a gemini and then my buddy bobby is a gemini and uh so we have this discord server with like only us three and maybe one other guy and gemini gang yeah, there was so there was some like misunderstanding one day where Bobby sent me a message that was supposed to go to someone else, and it wasn't really making fun of me or anything, but it was kind of just lightly ribbing me a little bit. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, why, you know, joking. I'm like, why don't you say that to to whoever you meant? And he deletes everything and like blocks me and does. He's like, oh shit, I fucked up, you know. And I'm like, dude, it's not that big of a deal. This is a misunderstanding. I was joking with you, man. I'm like Rambo. I, I can't even email the guy. Like, you have to email him and tell him I was joking. Like, don't, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, this is the Mercury retrograde. I'm like, what? He's like, it started yesterday. I was like, oh, my God, here we go. But sure enough, Metro- Mercury retrograde started the day before. And then amidst the Mercury crew, there was a miscommunication. And it, it broke into this big thing. And I was like, oh, this is, <laughs> this is so wild, man. Yeah, dude, it really does. It's why we started what we did. You know, we have, we have to say the astrology is the main reason why we started our channel at first. But I, we, I also, I studied Greg Braden. I studied Joe Dispenza studied the secret. The secret was a big thing with learning all the energy stuff and all that. But I really, I think, man, if you're going to do the numbers, you're going to do Gematria. I think the stars are just as important. And I'm going to call, I'm going to call out a recommendation now to two people, Bill Donahue. I said before, if you want to understand the Bible astrologically and and the mythologies and the connection, it's hidden meanings is his YouTube. And then also David Palmer of high vibe TV. He has deep astrology every, uh, I think Wednesday night. And he does deep love tarot every Monday. And he's those two guys alone will get give you the enough reasons why you should if you're into this stuff to follow more than just the numbers. Yeah, it comes from yeah. a real hermetic place. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. Sure, I guess I've, I've fallen into the the swing of like uh, kind of casting aside some things that aren't really specific to what I'm doing and helping me learn and. Um, for me, I guess it's been difficult looking into astrology and if they're, if they're not talking about any numbers with the astrology, like I'll pick up on ideas of it and I'll slowly build something, but it's difficult to capture my attention sometimes, I guess. I have, so I haven't heard of either of these guys though. I I will look into them because, um, I know you said, you mentioned Santos and Santos is one of the guys who I was like, Oh, this is really cool. Yeah. Love him. We're supposed to have him on actually. Um, yeah, awesome. Email him today. Him and then we uh, follow Astrology Hub, which Gemini Brett we should have on. And then, um, yeah, with Bill Donahue, man, I, I didn't even know he was from my backyard for two, three years after watching him. And he's he, with the Bible. He got me back into the Bible. Like I, at first I was just the stars, zeitgeist, learning the ages, believing in aliens. And then he, I, follow, I just fell upon a video, like the universe sent him to me. And he explains, I'm going to send you specific ones. I'll email you them of, okay. of when he, t- he talks about the Bible, he talks about astrology and he talks about the numbers and the connections to the Kabbalistic knowledge uh-huh. and all of that and how they all connect, why you should understand them. And, uh, I, I, I dude, I, I, Gio hears me talk about him daily. He's probably sick of it, but I, I love his work. I love David Palmer's work. Who is uh, the Leo King. Uh, he is on, m- not on YouTube much. He has an ingress video of uh, the Aries new year. So that would be cool to check out. It's a free video, but high vibe TV and Bill Donahue hidden meetings, man. Like I, I swear by both of those guys. Excellent. I'll check them out. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. So cool. Yeah, man. <clears throat> wow. No, that dude, I, I, we didn't plan to have like, it's, this is um, awesome. It's awesome. We connected for real because uh, obviously 
we are on the same frequency and we appreciate you doing this. You What's know, your, I, uh, do you mind giving me your, your full name so I can punch it in and see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just, oh, wait, you want a middle name too? Yeah. All right. R A Y M O N D. Oh, that, okay. Raymond. So that's a 9990 name. Just I like was going to say it before. What, what was, what did you say before with the 9099? So to is 99 and 90. Uh, letters is 99 and 90. The moon is 99 and 90. It's an upside down 666. And my moon sign is actually cancer, which is ruled by the moon. Okay. And, and you and Raymond is also 36 in both reductions. So that's connected to 666, the 36 triangular as well. Right. So your first name's all over on that. Yeah. Wavelength. All right. Oh ahead. yeah. Raymond, Raymond's and every, I, I think in the, like, I, I remember seeing all nine somewhere, like they all reduced to nine. Raymond. I have a friend named Raymond and I know him through his best friend whose last name is Pulaski, which is also 90 and 99. Hmm. Insane. Wow. Yeah, right. You forgot to mention when you were talking about the whole five thing about the whole Raymond James Stadium too. You know. That oh too. yeah. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So the Bu Tampa Bay Buck Stadium is Raymond James. Now my middle name's Harold, named after my jazz. Uh, that, was, that was all off your first name. Okay, we didn't get to your middle name. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, Harold H A R O L D, but that's from my grandfather. Now my dad imposed that because my grandfather was a pretty well-known jazz guitar player, and he wanted me to grow up to be a musician. So. My original name was supposed to be Raymond James Frusco. No way. But it's, but it's Raymond Harold Frusco. And now okay. when I'm young, dude, I'm eight years old. I'm not like, oh, Raymond James. I like them because of the stadium name. I actually figured that out way, way After. beyond that. Yeah. 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 Another, so another. Ray, Raymond Harold equal in reverse equals 203 and 68. My full name equals 203 and the 68 prime. Anyway, Frusco. Um, Love it. Oh, look at this. You're 230. We are the same Gematria. Wow. I got 95 and 230 and, and both Gemini's. So I'm, so my full name is 203, 95, 130. Yours is 230, 95, 103. And your full name. Oh my God. Oh my God. Your Jewish gematria matches 666, 1197, 1197. Wow. Type in 666. You get the same value. Holy and, shit. and your name equals 283 reverse. That's the moon in Latin. The moons, the number of 666, the moon, you, my friend, I got chills actually right now. That's fucked up. That's crazy. That's fucking it's not awesome. fucked up. It's not fucked up. It's no, no, I get it. it. I get it. It's, it's fucked up because it's so right. I, no, should I, share, I, I, should I share my screen real quick? Am I sharing my screen? Yeah, yeah. Go if you can. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have it set on my Zoom thing that you can do it. It says host disabled. Let me see. Hold on. That dude. I'm not. I mean, like I, I say it to G all the time, and I'm. I am not surprised anymore. No, but it's still, it's, it's like seeing a ghost. And I mentioned this in my last video where I was playing poker and we told a story about a hand and then the hand happened again, like two hands later. And I freaked out, not because I lost, but because it felt like I saw a ghost. Like I was like, ah, I had to run out of the room. It was nuts. Yeah. So it really brings like a certain feeling. You're like, wow. Uh, when, yeah, I, when I see those synchronicities, like it makes me want to like run around the room or something. Right. Like, wow. That's the thing. It's like, that's an, whoa, like the fact that that exists, that we can look at this and get that feeling from this. Whoa, that's amazing. And I think that incoming of that feeling too, there's so much that could be done with that type of energy since, you know, emotion is energy in motion. And we say that we're able to manifest things, you know, even more so by feeling and believing in a certain way. When I think when those things happen and you call out those synchronicities and you see them and stuff, that's why it's like people may be trying to like search for things. Yeah. Maybe some things you can search for the patterns and stuff, but I think when they just, you naturally fall upon them and you recognize them, I think then it's when you could really take in that feeling and then use that energy in sort of a way to kind of maybe get what, you know, I'll say it as get what you yeah. want. Well, no, that's, that's, that's what I try to tell people too. It's like, okay, how do you use it to your advantage? I don't really know, but the fact that you can see it and feel something from it, that to me is an empowerment. So yeah. look at this, know that there's something greater, know that that's, and if there's something greater, like something created and something wants you to do something, mm -hmm. um, feel empowered by that energy and then go, go about your life. Like, exactly. I, you know, most of the people who watch my videos, I think probably like they'll watch five, 10, 15 of my videos. They'll kind of get it and move on with their life. That's fine. I don't mind. I'm not trying to keep people watching my videos. I just want people to understand this is happening, get their mind around it a little bit, what it means for reality itself, and then go on. Because if they have that understanding, they're going to carry forward with a more positive, brighter energy in whatever they do.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it helps val- it helps validate a certain thing and kind of see like, all right, well, you know what? There's there's something greater here. Uh, there's something greater even just about me. And you know, especially if somebody can be in some sort of low place or anything and stuff, it really helps bring them awareness about things and can give them that give them that extra push and that faith. And like you said, empowerment. And empowerment to be like, all right, keep going. Right. Uh, so can you guys see the screen now? Yep. Yeah. So I got Ray's full name in the calculator. And this is remarkable, really. It's 230 and 95. And then you have the 103 in reverse. And my full name equals 203, 95, 130. Now look at this. Look at my reverse or my Jewish gematria, 1198. Reverse gematria is 1198. But remember the name Raymond Harold Frusco. 1197, uh, one off, which is 666. Oh, wow. And if you, if you uh, take 666, you get 95. Your name is 95 and 103, 103. in reduction. Yeah. Yep, 103. And then you take 600 and 66, and it's 2083 in Jewish gematria. Raymond Harold Frusco. 283 in reverse and the moon is 283 yeah and 90 and 99 and the 36 right and that's raymond 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 yeah raymond and that whole moon thing is like the distance from uh earth to the moon right so the the earth's polar axis is tilted 66 degrees from the plane to the sun Mm -hmm. and when the moon crosses that that's when we get the eclipse and when you write out 666 it's 156 an eclipse always occurs one, five, or six lunar phases after the last eclipse. Wow. And the Hebrew word for eclipse equals 156. The Greek word for total eclipse is 911, which is the 156th prime number. So it's all tied in through all these languages. Um, but the like, statistics for this, for this to end up like that, it, the statistics are insane. Like people don't It's oh, off the what, fucking what charts. Are the, what are the odds? It's off the fucking charts. Yeah, well, I just showed how you many with, fucking numbers there are. What I just showed you with your name in all four ciphers and how they connect to 666, like, oh, in the 23, you know how that connects to 666? No. Well, 666 is two-thirds. The movie movie was a big thing with that, right? 666 is two-thirds. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 And remember the movie number 23 with Jim Carrey where he teaches Gematria? Yeah. Yeah. So your name could not... if I saw your name in a news story, I would think it was fake. It was a fake name. It was designed for a six 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 riddle. Jeez and it was su- and it was supposed to be James. So what are the odds it ends up on Harold? Well, and like with my name too, right? So I don't know if you saw. I have this second middle initial, the J, hmm. and this is because a few months before I was born, um, one of my parents' good friends committed suicide. And they thought that Michael was too generic of a middle name. They wanted to pay extra homage. So they gave me his middle initial as well. So had that guy not died, I would not have this name. Would I be teaching Gematria? Is that guy's death connected to my birth? Yeah, I tried like to get, it, I tried to get my, that guy's, uh, the date that happened for my parents and they couldn't find it. But That's what I mean. Like if, 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 you know, letters and numbers and language, you know, it, it, it carries a certain vibration and stuff like that. Like, just the fact of having that name and you know embodying that name and believing that hey this this is who i am like you're carrying that certain frequency and stuff like you know what i mean like that and that's where that could be that connection like say you know so for your parents friend and stuff and and you have that vibration in your name it's like you can also be tapped in and connected to something of another realm as well yeah I think so. There's something to it, man. Wow. And it's, it's weird how, how many of my friends have the middle name Michael. I know it's a common one, but mm-hmm. it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, so, it's still, I still it, don't, it, don't, it don't matter how common it's the combination of things and the way it's all set up. So it might be a common name, but it's how it relates to you is I think what's important. Mm-hmm. Right. And kind of how it completes your name, so to speak, you know, like, right. Right. Um, and one of the, I forget who it was, but there was a, um, one of my subscribers uh, who was Jewish told me that uh, his rabbi once taught him that um, the day on which humans become closest to being prophets is when the, the day that they named their child. And I was like, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's, 
it's pretty deep. Well, that's what they right? Don't they? They have a big thing on that with children being the Messiah and all that. I'm guessing they're relating to that, right? I'm not sure. I, I think uh, they under. I think they generally have an understanding. Just the gematria. Yeah, like the the numbers behind your name are going to help shape who you become, what you do, the people you meet, things like that. So. Yeah, that um, five's huge with me, man. Like I'm born in the fifth month of the year too. That's yeah. Like that, that five, and I know that that's the number of man uh, in certain ciphers. So wait, what's what's your birthday then? It's five twenty six. What year? May twenty sixth, nineteen ninety. Okay. So we're born eighteen hundred and eighteen days apart. So six plus six plus six is eighteen. So we're born eighteen hundred eighteen days apart. Wow. That's pretty funny. Um. Yeah, 21, so 11 squared. This is a master number 11. You got the five in your uh, life lesson number, and then you got the five in your name, Gematria, too. Yeah, that was it, too. Right, the name. Yep. So two plus three, five, obviously. And uh, yeah, man, this was cool for me, too, because I like that, like, you guys did express an interest in running numbers and stuff, but you didn't bring it up right away or anything. It's like we were doing it till the very end. And then uh, I got my mind blown as much as I could have thought. Like you, we're talking, I mean, how many numbers did we really, it, you brought me on. We didn't really talk about that many numbers, right? Like we didn't get into numerology. We talked more about the idea of it, the concept of it, but we did talk about 666. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then that's well, the number we find that your name is coded with. And the same thing happened just a couple months ago with a friend of mine. Like I mentioned the number 266 because it's the galactic center. And then I typed his full name in and his name is 266 article. Wow. And I was like, see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, it's not like I can, I can tell you everything about you, but there's something mystical going on around it. And that's I think, the point. Yeah. Like the lack of specific specificity is what does turn some people off to it sometimes. But man, if you can just open your mind, it's there. It wants you to wake up. You know? I think that's all it takes. And, uh, you know, even when we had, uh, you know, asked you to come on and, and do this with us, it wasn't really about just, yes, we wanted, we want people to understand Gematria and from a, Gematria researcher, a professional who does it for basically, you know, a daily thing. Like, you know what you're talking about and we wanted to bring it on, but it's also about, you see how in this community, like it's about getting to, to know each other and it's about like connecting and understanding perspectives too. It, it goes back to the whole thing that if you're just going to sit there and focus on the numbers, think about how many other important conversations we had in this, in this specific window. Mm -hmm. So it yeah, wasn't it was just about the numbers. Obviously, that's what brought us together. But it was definitely also the fact that we, we are on a simil uh, similar frequency. Well, we just proved it. And I know I, I stopped the screen sharing, but my full name, if you saw in the reverse order, was 337. That was Chance's full name, the guy who runs Interverse. So um, these aren't the only podcasts I've done, but the ones where I, I think the, you two are like the only guys who are younger than me that I've been on shows with to this point. So... For, our, for us to have alignments and, I mean, you know, we're both in music. We, we both seem energetically pretty, uh, pretty yeah, compatible. Yeah, I was in a metal though. band. Metal band for six metal. years. Metal. Oh, right on. I played I played drums, a lot of jamming. We, we released stuff, but it was all jam stuff. Dad's a drummer. I'm a drummer, but I play guitar and write. I'm more of a composition. I love multiple instruments. I, I, I'm, I say it all the time to Gio. I am literally the epitome of a Gemini where even in, in a cult, literally. I ride like this. I skim everything. And yeah. You know, and I add jack of all trades, master of nothing. But cool. in, in a sense, I'm I'm really working on that. And, and for music sake, I, I just love all of it. And I think that's my, my thing is I, I'm so interested and curious about everything. So mm -hmm. even with my dad being a drummer, he pushed that on me. And then I, my grandfather had passed away three months after I was born. He was a, he, he actually won a Grammy in jazz. So no I, way. yeah, and wow. everything skips a generation according to most. And guitar was something I felt connected to drums was something I felt good at. Mm. That makes sense. So. No, it does. I, I always wanted to be the drummer, the time, the mathematics behind it. it that's just numbers. Right. right, right. Yeah. It really was. I think yeah. you're the um, count. And the, yeah. I like that. <laughs> the one, two, three, four. Yeah. You come to six even sometimes, but Se seven, me, if you're playing prog metal, yeah, seven that's my true. Life path. <laughs> seven I love, I love me a, good, if, a seven eight. tool song or something. Yeah. Well, they're, they're like nine eights. Seven eight is actually my favorite signature. I think it's way underused. More people need to use seven eight. Yeah. Um, but like, I hadn't made music for over a decade up until this past month, and uh, my friend and I split uh, Ableton 
So we got the Ableton 11 software nice. and I've been going ham on that. So it's wild, man, because when I, when I was making music back then, like all these tools weren't quite available yet, you know, like VSTs were few and far between. So um, I'm back into the, not really performing, but I did try singing and I auditioned it a little bit. So it's not that bad, I guess. <laughs> So yeah, I'm I just diving back into it and enjoying kinda, it. A yeah. lot of people do that. I do it too. Dude, I can't sing, so it's not going to happen. <laughs> like, I just I give up after the, like two, the second or third tank. Like, yeah, that's close enough. I went to actually, I went to Vogue for audio and I, uh, that's my other, that's what I want my profession to be. That's what I want to make money doing, including the pot, you know, the podcast and all that. I really would love to do all of this and make money and not to live fancifully like that, but more so to right. do what I love to do. And yeah. I went to school for, you know, audio Anytime you ever want to do some projects or you want to, you know, work on some or if you want me to help and edit and mix, I went to school for it. So yeah. that's excellent. I, I have a connection to uh, an audio engineer, like my roommate, when I lived in California, uh, he was in the sound industry and he ended up winning a, an Oscar for his work on Whiplash in the film oh. for like best sound design. So yeah, it's a lot of like, I've always been surrounded by music people and sound people and stuff like that. It's been fun got a lot of chance to play with some people if you uh if you do research on music too what it for for instrumentalists like us and all that where people just write or play uh we strengthen the corpus callosum which is the part of the brain that connects both hemispheres and when you watch bill donahue's videos you'll understand and learn that god planted a garden to the east and when you when you look north east is to the right and when you meditate you kind of access more of the right brain so i think a lot of musicians especially even when they're playing being in a meditative mind I think we gain access. That's why we're weird. And like, For sure. you know, we, we, we end up having different streams of thought. And I think it's because we shut off the left brain. So. Well, and it's for me, it's always been like, you just get into it and let it guide you. I mean, you have to, otherwise, uh, like it doesn't channel. Work. yeah. Like my, my friend, my best friend, uh, Jason, he actually has a really cool piano channel on YouTube. And, uh, he taught me scales, like when I first got into making music, because I didn't really know much about it. He just taught me like what a scale is and a couple different scales. And then like he taught me that. And then I had like three hours of music, like after a few months, I just like went full ham and just did it. And he couldn't understand, like, how do you write all this stuff? Like, it doesn't make sense. You don't know anything about music. And I'm like, Dude, I don't know. I really don't know. Like, I start something, I lay some notes down, and then I hear something and I have to try and make that. Yeah, like, yeah. It just I comes think to channel me, dude. It. Yeah, you channel and, it. For the last, you know, after a couple years of that, like I stopped, it stopped channeling. Like, I don't know what got in the way. And I think it was probably like this, you know, because like I said, I had woken up, but I had to, I couldn't really do anything about it. And that was like building up in the back of my head, you know, mm. and it, I, I kind of lost that creative link where I really wanted it sometimes. Um, so a few now that I, you can try to fix that too. I know meditation, man. Meditation. Yeah, no, that's, that is the best. It's definitely the best. Yeah. I always feel best after meditating. You open the door. Yeah. So coming around this time with like new music technology to work with and having a different mind for electronic music now that I've heard another you know, 15 years of stuff, it's like, I know what I want to do with it. And it's, it's, ah, it's just to have an emotional tie to something you're creating on like a regular basis. Such a beautiful thing, you know, and uh, I yeah, thought I was done with it, but I'm back. Yeah. I mean, that's, a, it's a real, I think it's, it's important to have any sort of creative outlet where you can express yourself, but being a musician's a gift, man, because you really get to, you know, not, not everybody gets to do that. You know, I, I always chose metal because uh, I, between my Gemini air and Sag fire, but then my sensitive little moon in the middle, uh, mm -hmm. I have, I have this, like, I love metal and I love epic. Like, like I always liked the metal songs that are, it's like the heroes on top of the mountain, just defeated the dragon type of vibe, you know, big choruses and stuff. But then I love me a classical soft, this and that, but it, 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 I, I, that, that Gemini variety kicks in and I love all aspects and all the emotions and all the ups and downs. So I think it's a, it's a gift to have that, man. I try and I, Gio, I, I he's around all the time. I try to get him to, to, to tap into. Yeah. Now, man. So. Yeah, in the beginning, before the podcast and everything, we kind of dabbled a little bit. But then once we started doing that, kind of didn't have the time for that. It felt like, like for you, but, same thing. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, now, fortunately, I got time, especially the way the world is now. So, uh, you know, it's it's been great. And like my brother, um, he bought some new property this year. And he, he like the only reason he bought this place is to have like mega parties. Right. And 
he wants to make sure I'm playing my music at every party and stuff. So it's like, I kind of have something to look forward to as far as that goes, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, if I get enough into it and um, you know, the thing for me, it's like with Gematria, it just really touches into a, like a certain part of my soul that I, that I enjoy. And I, I feel like I have an audience already and I don't know, I don't want to say, I feel like I have a responsibility to, to help them along or anything, but you know, it's hard not to tap back into it and, touch base with everyone and like i said the riddles just get stronger and stronger but yeah i think keep 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 doing it and that's obviously it's your i think it's getting in touch with the divine you're you're seeing through the matrix and i think that's actually very spiritual that's probably why yeah and like the type of enlightenment and emotions i receive from something like numerology like <laughs> fuck i can't get that anywhere else like i mean it's at least not in what i've experienced so far so Check out that um, astrology and check, I will. Out, check out that, uh, that build. But yo, man, I'm telling you, dude, I'm obsessed with this guy's work. So check out Bill Donahue. I'm almost like telling you to. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah. How about like, don't let me back on unless I watch this stuff. <laughs> That's totally. I think that cool. is a rule. Yeah. And if you want, dude, I mean, at the, at, I'm, I'm moving to Florida in, uh, on April 23rd. So we're sitting actually in the same room right now. And two, three, um, four. That's another, that's a good, you know, the moon equals 423. In English, Gematria. <laughs> oh, wow. So I have like direct, I mean, like the moon, my moon signs played a very prevalent role in like, it, it's big in my life. Obviously. I, yes. <laughs> it's huge. It's, it's huge. Like, I mean, it's, sometimes it overrides my, my other characteristics, but I definitely have, I've always had a connection with it. I'm actually more of a night person. I, I feel more alive when the moon's out. So I definitely can see that and me moving on a day and also Mars exits Gemini on the day I leave goes into cancer, which is ruled by the moon. Ah. So, um, I could see that. And so when we, when I moved, we had bought, we had finally have our setup now and we're, we're going to be, we want to be doing, we want to be more on, on YouTube a lot more because just doing the Spotify and the Apple music and the podcast, it's limiting. And as many times as you want to come back on and have these conversations and maybe we'll even have some times where we're sitting, we'll, we'll, we'll literally pick out a, an area of discussion and we'll, we'll try and stick to that. And, and, and this was more of a get to knowing each other and seeing where no, we're this at. was a lot of fun. Yeah. I appreciate this. Yeah. 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 So, but I would love to do it again, dude. I have 150%. Definitely. 150, huh? Well, did you know that? I'm just kidding. I just made that up. I don't, I don't know what 150 is. I was about to is. say, what, what, what do we got? Wait, no, wait, did you nothing. say you leave it April 23rd, you said? April 23rd. April 23rd. All right. So that's four days before my birthday, too. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't I never really see my, my synchronicities. I never really realized mine at all. Well, Gio, what's your what's your birthday? So uh, four, uh, four, the 27th? Yeah, 4 27 uh, 1992. <laughs> I'm going to grab a drink real quick. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, Gio, you have the 142 birth numerology. So 142 is the number that connects me with Gematria. Um, my name is my, Derek Takori's 142, so is Gematria 142. And uh, let's see, what's today? Oh, it's 330 days after your birthday today. Huh. Well, 331, and then today is 67 numerology. That's so the 67th prime is 331. Okay. So your age has a prime relationship with the date. That's fun. Also, today, and I, I, did, I missed this when I was decoding Ray's name, but remember his name was 283? Yeah. 666 is 283. The moon's 283. Today is the date that leaves 283 days on the, in the year. Oh, wow. Holy shit. <laughs> That's wild. That is crazy. Hey, we just, you just said, he just said something about you, man. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> I got, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. But mm -hmm. so is that your, no, my that how you spell your full first name? Yeah, Joaquino. my full full name is Joaquino, and it's spelled like that. And then obviously everybody calls me Gio, and then last name D'Angelo. Okay, is that D-I or D-E? D, uh, it's D apostrophe A, but D-A. Oh, okay. Sorry, gotcha. Dude, your name in Gematria is 142 in the alphabetic okay. order. My name is 142, same as my birthday. Okay, I'm sharing my screen again. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely share your screen, yeah. This is this is so stupid. This is ridiculous. Crazy. This is uh, this is so dumb. I want to see if there's any connection with with even Mercury too. Like, uh, yeah, the eighty eight, yeah, the eighty eight for sure. Eighty eight day, eighty eight day cycle. Right. The Merc the magic square is eight by eight. Okay. Okay. So, Ray, your buddy's name he sums a one forty two. 
Derek Tukuri is 142. Fucking Jamatria is 142. And look at his birth numerology. Wow. 142. And then look at today. Today is the day that leaves 283 days in the year. Remember, that's your name, Ray? Yeah. 666, 283, the moon, 283. Wow. Holy shit. So. So, like, no more, no other proofs fucking needed right there? Like. Yeah, that's why it's great is because I can drop the mic. Like, I can just be like. Oh, no, keep going if you can. <laughs> it's totally fine with me. Wow. Proofs in the pudding, people. Yeah, I mean, we probably could. I, I got to go to the bathroom. No. <laughs> well, yeah, well, like I we, said. We want to leave some material for next time, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, if anything, like I said, I think we should, you know, we'll, we'll call it a day. And we'll definitely arrange this again, dude, if you want to do it once a month, once a week, whatever you want to do. But I, I definitely do want to really strengthen our uh, our you know, connections with everybody who's doing stuff, especially you, man, with all the connections we have, you know, not a lot of Gematria people out there either. I think people deserve to see it. I think you deserve the recognition. Um, you know, we want to be the, the catalyst for that if we can and help anybody, you know, gain uh, any, you know, to people just to see you and see your work and see how the truth community can come together. And maybe we could work on just how we relate to each other opposed to just spitting the facts and the this and the that all the time too. Sure. Yeah, that's something I could always do better at myself. You know? Yeah, man. For anybody watching too, like let us let them let them know how you know how they can you know reach out and support uh, and to help support you and everything and where to find your your work and your content. Uh, we'll also make sure to put it in in the description the links. Sure, of course. the uh, The website is gematronator dot com. G e m a t r i n a t o r and. Uh, Links to the calculator in there. There's also links to my blog, which gets the most work of anything I do. Um, and I post, I don't know, 20 to 30 times a month on various news stories. Um, if celebrity passes away or something, there is inevitably numerology with it. You guys are um, all over it. Yep. Yeah, and then, uh, so type in Gematria calculator into Google. You'll see my website as well. Uh, Gematronator85 on YouTube. Uh, that's where most of my, well, you know, the blog turns into videos. And then uh, I do have a Twitter as well, at Gematronator. I don't use it so much anymore because Twitter is a, uh, it's a pit. But um, yeah, that's, that's pretty all much all it. That so. stuff is. All that stuff is. Cool. And then I'm always on Discord pretty much. So if you go to my website and click the miscellaneous link on top, you'll see a, a link to Discord. And uh, if you need to get in touch with me for anything, that's one way to do it. And uh yeah, like I'm not the greatest when it comes to being a people person. Uh, I'm, I'm really into the numbers thing and I get a lot of people contacting me. And, you know, I, I wish it was easier because, you know, you, you spend time with people and a lot of people, like, you realize, oh my God, this person really wasted a lot of my time. And you, you start, that starts to happen over and over and it's, it's hard. So, like I said, I get it when people get frustrated with people or whatever. But, it's, it's normal. It's normal. And especially in the yeah. area of we're in, you know, like with the truth it, or even just YouTubers. It's like, are people doing things for their own intentions and their own selfish reasons? Are they uh, bullshitters, you know? Sure. Are they real? You know, like when you're talking to somebody through a screen, it's the one thing that kind of gets hindered is actual in-person vibrations. But I, but I still think, though, you do vibe to people and, and it's, it's real easy to get, uh, you know, to put up a wall and a shell on the internet. And, you know, maybe, maybe that's even with Zach, man. Maybe he has, you know, you don't really see him work much with, a lot of people and he's smart for doing it because he he shells up you don't know who you know and that's why when you do find good people yeah. on the same vibration i think you, you you stick with them and that's why we're both more than happy to keep doing this too yeah i appreciate it um we shall and we'll uh we'll we'll incorporate a little more of the astrological elements i'm sure i'll pick up on something from these guys and uh We'll do our homework. Bring we'll try in, and bring. But... We'll bring our end of the knowledge too, so you don't gotta go crazy. Maybe we'll teach you, you <laughs> right things. We'll teach you things. Right on. And now the topic of you know uh, being more aware of community and vibrations. Like it's nice to have that reminder. So yeah. cheers to you guys. All about it. Yeah. Absolutely. We talk about it all on the podcast too. That's all on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. We're we're trying to expand as well. And we our our goal for our stuff is to really just 
continually talk about things that should be talked about, or at least that are of interest. And that maybe could be speculative. You know, you sit there and you just listen about things and have just certain discussions and even create a community where people tell us what to talk about or give us a topic and say, okay, let's just talk about it. It's not about beliefs. It's not about just straight facts. It's just about speculative you know, mindsets. It's about just discussing it. Nobody's yep. going to call anybody names or say you're wrong or right. It's about saying, show me your perspective. We'll show you ours and we'll let you decide, but keep your opinions to yourself unless we're at their, they're important and, and not malicious. Yeah. Or, Learning how to set aside bias too, and be able to yeah. have appropriate conversation with each other. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, I support what you guys are doing and um, yeah, I mean, we'll look at uh you know, throwing a, throwing a link to the, the video or whatever on my blog or channel. And, uh, awesome. Go from there. Cool, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. We appreciate you having on, man. It was definitely, definitely probably one of the better conversations we've, we've ever had. So, and, and cool. Just overall interesting. And like we said, we'd definitely love to have you back on. All right. Well, glad I could, glad I could help. It was, it was great. Absolutely, man. Well, yeah, well, let, let me. I know you got a piss. Let me throw this last thing in there too before you go. No, I got bottles here. I'm, I'm all ready. I'm just gonna go. Dude, I do the same <laughs> shit. No, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. No, dude, I got a piss bottle right here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. No, but, right. but I do. I do. Well, I live upstairs uh, at my mom's house because I'm still. At my oh, mom's okay. Because we're in a pandemic. You don't. And, you don't want to wake her up sometimes. Or? Yeah, and she sleeps in the uh, living room, and she's a crazy Aquarius. But anyway, you okay. are a people person, and I don't think you know you are. If you don't, but I'm telling well, you right now, the, the your engagement and ability to talk to us and teach and come off with all your stuff, you do phenomenal. And I, I, I'm not an internet people person. I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> okay, right. But yeah. I'm just saying though, like okay. this conversation was absolutely enjoyable. You're awesome at what you do. You should do it more. And uh, and we're we're Thank happy you. to have this connection. For sure. Great. Well, mark the date. Well, yeah. <laughs> we'll mark the date. One hundred percent. Cool guys. Well, I'm glad I could impress. It was fun. All yeah, right, Derek. Absolutely, man. All right. Until Take next it easy, time. gentlemen. Take All care. Right. We'll do. Later. Peace out. Later. See ya.